I've come to actually um, realize that the UN functions a lot like medicine for the world, you know, that you are fundamentally healers and, uh, and, and taking on uh, all of the, the sort of dis-ease in the world and the society without actually, um, you know, and trying to, in some sense, bring um, healing to uh, conditions that you don't have total control over because you're not a country, but you are an attempt to unite all the countries in the world for some common purpose. And I think there's never been a better time for mindfulness on planet earth, because we're beginning to realize that uh, no matter how many countries there are on planet earth, uh, we're, we only have one planet. And if we don't know how to share it in appropriate ways and use it effectively, then we are basically writing our, our own funeral. And so the stakes are extremely high now. And in the kind of environments that uh, many of you folks work in, the stress levels are just uh, off the charts. And so mindfulness and all sorts of practices that would help healers to to recalibrate themselves and be as uh, um, balanced as possible in their own lives allows everybody to, in some sense, meet the high demands of the work situation in ways that uh, can be uh, profoundly healing, not just to themselves and protective of some of the consequences of uh, uh, rampant stress, but also perhaps optimize one's effectiveness in working in the environments that you work in with people from all over the world who are suffering in various ways or, uh, or dealing with governments that may not uh, you know, be as responsive as you would like them to be. So, uh, th that, so this is not some kind of just uh, you know, popular new craze. This is something that's, that's based on thousands of years of, of evolutionary practices that actually uh, can help us to connect with hidden dimensions of our own humanity and then connect with other people in ways that are healing. Well, I think the first thing to say uh, is that you really are dealing with the full catastrophe of the human condition. And I, I bow to all of you for doing that because um, you're, you're making life choices to enter into a certain kind of fire and help people to uh, live meaningful lives under very difficult circumstances. And also show the world what might be possible 100, 200, 300 years down the road because we are realizing, we are waking up to the fact, as I was saying, that we live on one small planet. And if you go uh, up, uh, you know, uh, in space and you look down, there are no boundaries between Canada and the United States. There are no lines between, you know, sort of Ukraine and Russia. You know, the, it's one planet. And in a certain way, I think our uh, assignment for the future is to learn how to take care of our planet and to learn to live with each other. I think Bertrand Russell once said, humanity has learned to fly in the air and go deep under the oceans, but we haven't yet learned how to live on earth, on the land. And this is, I think, the, uh, the challenge of the present moment and the future and with the challenges of AI and everything else that's coming on board and globe and the global catastrophe, so to speak, of global warming and resource, you know, exploitation and so forth, extraction. Uh, this is not a prescription. We, you could say that humanity, in a certain way, coming back to medicine, is the autoimmune disease of planet Earth. We're both the cause of the disease and the first victim of the disease. And in order to actually uh, heal. We need to wake up. So mindfulness practices actually uh, help us to tap into what I've come to call a superpower that we don't recognize we already have.
if it's possible to exercise this muscle of mindfulness in the world of diplomacy, the outcomes are guaranteed to be uh, less stressful and more effective in reducing suffering and also the ignorance and animosity that's often the root cause of that suffering. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. love the idea that maybe the UN could uh, encourage people to understand how to cultivate this in a way that's completely inclusive so that it's not about a particular kind of origin of this because mindfulness is often spoken of as the heart of Buddhist meditation, but it's not Buddhist. It's in all human cultures because it's nothing other than pure awareness. And the Buddha, who was not a Buddhist himself, uh, is famous for having said uh, that mindfulness is the direct path to the uh, eradication, the liberation of suffering. And so um, at this particular juncture on the planet, I think there are very real reasons to un explain why or how mindfulness has moved from something that very few people have heard about to something that's, yeah, of course, it's popularized to a certain degree that's you know, seems to be commercialized and exploitative, but in in its depth, this is something that's, uh, as I said, the, uh, a hidden resource for humanity that if we learn to tap into it, and it's also free. So okay. it's available in all languages, in all cultures, uh, because it has to do with this moment as it is. This is very deep because what, what I hear you saying is that actually we have to do the work without being attached to the outcome of the work because the attachment itself is toxic. That doesn't mean that we won't have good outcomes. In fact, we might have much better outcomes if we don't tell ourselves the, I think, too small stories of I, me, and mine, and how my reputation or my success or my burnout or whatever it is, and I'm not disparaging any of it, but yeah. that's often where we get stuck and we lose sight of the fact of this hidden dimension and this, uh, this superpower that is available to us from birth that would change the calculus of that in such a way that everything is still true but there's a larger there's a larger uh, understanding of the actuality of things that leads to um the kind of dynamical balance in the face of constant toxic change and so forth that allows us to um be in it for the long term rather than burning out or falling into despair. And that's where the culture of the United Nations would come in that support systems really need to be in place so people don't feel isolated in wherever their locale is without the sense that you've got the entire body politic of the United Nations uh, behind you and uh, underneath you in supporting your well-being, not just your burning out through, you know, endless stress that's impossible to deal with. And that's a kind of what I call an orthogonal rotation in consciousness that not only individuals can go through, but institutions are going to have to go through. Even if you drop into one moment, one breath, and you learn how to be totally at home in your body, then you could take on the body politic in an entirely different way than if you really are not paying any attention or even abusing your body and not giving it enough of what it needs for the long haul. That's a wonderful question. And, um, if we can't answer that question, planet Earth is going to be in big trouble. The challenge is now, you know, it's almost as if, well, the dinosaurs were very powerful, but one big asteroid put an end to, you know, the millions and millions of years of the dinosaurs reigning on Earth. 
And if we're not careful, we can create those kinds of conditions without the asteroid, uh, just from our own ignorance and delusion and greed. So waking up to our true nature, as the Buddhists might say, is not a luxury. It's an it's an absolute karmic assignment for humanity on planet Earth to know who we are. It goes right back to Socrates. Uh, know thyself. And we have to know ourselves in relationship now because we understand that everything is connected to everybody else. So all of the war zones and all of the 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 death and destruction and the, of innocent people who are being killed all over the world this is happening to the entire body politic of planet earth and we can't say well i'm over here and i don't care about it because it's happening over there it's one body politic and if we don't take care of every cell of the body then you're guaranteed for you know to have some kind of uh, disease process arise. So this is why I think uh, we need to wake up as a species to the name we gave ourselves and then learn how to govern ourselves. And this again comes back to the UN and governments in general. The word Dharma actually means lawfulness. We need to learn a new level of lawfulness about how to maximize well being on planet Earth and minimize harm, not merely for human beings, but for all beings. I'm very optimistic that humanity can rise to the occasion. When we understand what the real challenge is, then we can meet that challenge. And I don't think we've really understood it yet, but the pressure on us to understand it is getting more and more. And the fact is uh, that, it, you know, this conversation would not have been happening 50 years ago. It would be like, there would, medicine would never have allowed meditation into the mainstream of medical care 50 years ago. And now it's happening. And if you hear the words medicine and meditation, all of a sudden you realize, oh my God, they come from the same no, root think. meaning. And so that I think is the same for diplomacy as well, that there's some, something about dialogue, something about you and me, self and other, Ubuntu, that is deep, deeply uh, associated with interconnectedness, just the way the whole planet evolved in an interconnected way. And if we don't understand the interconnectedness between what the chlorophyll does and what the hemoglobin does with oxygen and carbon dioxide, especially the amount of carbon dioxide we're putting into the atmosphere as we destroy the lungs of the planet in the rainforest, then, you know, uh, Homo sapiens sapiens does not have a potentially uh, happy outcome down the road. And the planet won't care, the universe won't care, but we should, and it should be more than just the United Nations that cares. It should be every single government understanding that in order to govern, we need to understand lawfulness and create laws that maximize well-being on every level for the planet, not just for humans, and minimize harm.